Welcome to Pod Dust Daily for September 18th, 2008, episode 80. Had a laptop today. It was a Dell Inspiron 710M, I believe. It's like those 12 inch laptops. Really cool, I think. But I don't like this one very much. Problem with this one is it had a power jack problem. Um, this is actually going to be in the laptop videos. I filmed it today. So, Cynthia, I hope you're listening. Laptop videos are on the way, coming soon. We're actually, let me just put it this way they're getting done. Um, the problem with this one, uh, I had a power jack problem, and I had fixed the power jack. Now, here's something I probably shouldn't do. And um, if you could get away with it sometimes, sometimes you can't. You got a power jack that's damaged. Instead of replacing the jack entirely, you do a fix to the jack. You just got to use your judgment on this. Sometimes the jack is an, enough intact where you can fix it. Other times you just should just take it off and put a new one in. It's one of those Dell round, like the round, um, you know, the Dell Jackster. How could I explain? It's like a rim. The a power adapter is not like a normal power adapter where it's like just got the hole in the middle. It's like a rim around the edge and it's got a pin in the middle. It was one of those, and there's like there's like nine contact points on the motherboard for those. They're a real pain to get off, so I tried to do a fix on it by just kind of um, working some solder magic, I guess you could say. <laughs> but it wasn't very magical. This computer came back. This is the third time it came back. So I said, look, if it happens, I, I replaced the jack this time. I said, if it happens again, I will drive to your house, and I will repair it right there on the spot for you. So, um, I guess the good point about that is she was happy with the customer service. Even though it, it broke, this is the third time it broke. Of course, I didn't charge her any more money. I apologized profusely, and I, 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 you know, said I would go out to her house if it happened again. So she was, she was happy about that, but not happy about the service, uh, the original work. In other words, you get what I'm saying. Uh, William had emailed me today about a partitioning program because I, I, uh, my version of partition magic doesn't work with Vista. I just found out yesterday. And he recommended a program, which, by the way, William, it's awesome. It worked like a charm. It's called Ease Us Partition Manager. That's E-A-S-E-U-S, -E Ease Us Partition Manager. It's at partition-tool.com. That's www.partition-tool.com. It's a free program. It looks um, strikingly similar to Partition Magic, but it is not Partition Magic. It looks very similar to Partition Magic. That's all I'm going to say. But it worked like a charm. It's a great program. It works with Vista, and it's free. I'm going to be using that baby a lot. Thank you, William. That was an awesome, awesome recommendation. It, um, it got the job done today. No problems at all. So I appreciate that. Have a, another computer, desktop. Vista, running Vista, not Service Pack 1. Very strange computer. Well, well first of all, it was just gobbed up with spyware, adware, viruses. This Customer actually um, looks like he uh, does a lot of file sharing and a lot of downloading, and his system was very infected. So after we cleaned up the system, it was just acting crazy, which happens sometimes. When you remove viruses, sometimes viruses attach themselves to vital system parts. And if you send your virus antivirus program out there to detect it, it goes, look, I found this virus, but it's attached to this major it's attached to something very important to Windows. What do you want me to do with it? So that's the, in those cases, I move that to the stuff to the vault because you don't want to necessarily delete it because it might crash your system. This um, computer had tons of viruses, tons of spyware. We ran super anti-spyware. We ran Smith Fraud Fix. I ran CCleaner. Um, we put ABG on it, and it was just acting crippled in a crippled way. Um, one of the things it was doing was when it booted up, it would say Vista is not a genuine copy of Vista. Click here to, to uh, what's the word? Click here to register it. So we would click on the link. It would take us to Microsoft. Microsoft would say, okay, I'm checking Windows right now. And it would go, okay, it's genuine. And then after you reboot the system, it would say, well, not genuine anymore. So it would just keep flipping back and forth. It was a nightmare. Um, we'd, we tried to put a Service Pack 1 on, and that's actually where I left this computer. I love doing Windows updates these days. I mean, really, Windows updates have fixed so many problems for me, and Carrie had written me an email about it. Service Pack 3 fixes a lot of things. I mean, if a computer doesn't have that and it's acting funny in a way that you think it might be the operating system that's just acting a little funny, make sure it has all the updates and the latest Service Pack. A lot of times, that will fix the problem. I fixed um, the processor maxing out at 99% on Service Host. Fixed that with Service Pack 3. 
I'm going to try to fix this problem with Windows claiming it's not genuine. And every time you go to Microsoft site saying it is genuine with Service Pack 1. Let's see what Service Pack 1 does to the system. So a lot of times when I feel like I have a crippled operating system, first thing I do is Windows updates. It doesn't always work, but it does work sometimes. And the, I, that's all I have for the shop for today, guys. This, this uh, Inspiron laptop I talked about in the beginning of the day or at the beginning of the podcast, took me almost all day to do. It was a really tough job. Uh, sometimes those power jack, power jack jobs just kill me. So that's all that happened in the shop today. My dad did maybe one or two more that I didn't remember to write in the notes, but that's basically the gist of it. I'm going to play some voicemails right now. I'm going to read some emails and probably not going to take any live calls today. I don't want to run into Mike Tech show tonight. But here we go with the voice, some voicemails. This one is from Eric. It's a follow-up voicemail. And now here it is. Hello to all those out in Podduck country. It's Eric. <laughs> I wanted to leave a follow-up message uh, from yesterday uh, about why you can only see a certain amount of memory in a 32-bit operating system or it should be four gigabytes, but you're only able to see three or three and a half gigabytes. I had mentioned that I was going to leave a, 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 a thread on uh, Scott Mueller's forums, which it did, and he, of course, got back and provided the answer. And it turns out that I was mostly correct in that uh, some of those addresses, memory addresses, are reserved for other components such as the BIOS and, and whatnot. Where I was wrong is I thought that if you had, for instance, a video card, and the example I used was a 48.7 X2 that uses 2 gigs of memory, I thought those 2 gigs would be subtracted from the amount you could see. That is not true. Uh, the memory addresses are reserved only for motherboard components and uh, your BIOS and whatnot. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, so if you have a card or something, that, that, that memory is not subtracted. The reason why you can only see, sometimes you see three gigs and sometimes you see three and a half gigs is certain components will consume more addresses than, than others. Uh, the example he gave is a PCI Express slot will consume more than just a regular PCI slot. In any case, I hope that uh, clears up any confusion. Uh, I suggest I, I left a, a, a thread on your message boards also, Steve. So if anyone is interested, you should definitely check out 